What I have here uh, is a copy of Donald Trump's tax returns. We have his federal tax return for one year for 2005. I believe this is the only set of the president's federal taxes that reporters have ever gotten a hold of. Uh, we got these pages. We got this document today from a Pulitzer Prize winning investigative journalist who's better on financial matters than almost anybody else in the business. His name is David K. Johnston. Uh, these pages turned up the other day in his mailbox. David will join us live here in just a moment. Um, but because nobody has had the president's taxes before, we didn't know what to expect um, when we showed this 2005 return to the White House to ask him if it's real. Uh, we sent this over to the White House tonight, and the White House responded basically with, yep. Uh, I'm going to read you the, the White House statement on this tonight. Quote, before being elected president, Mr. Trump was one of the most successful businessmen in the world with the responsibility to his company, his family, and his employees to pay no more tax than legally required. That being said, Mr. Trump paid $38 million, even after taking into account large-scale depreciation for construction on an income of more than $150 million, as well as paying tens of millions of dollars in other taxes, such as sales and excise taxes and employment taxes. And this illegally published return proves just that. Despite this substantial income figure and tax paid, it is totally illegal to steal and publish tax returns. The dishonest media can continue to make this part of their agenda, while the president will focus on his, which includes tax reform that will benefit all Americans. White House statement for tonight. For the record, the First Amendment gives us the right to publish this return. It is not illegally published. Nor are we fake. Pinch me. I'm real. But good on the White House. Uh, for acknowledging the return um, as proof of what the president made and paid that year. Uh, here's the thing, though. A full tax return for someone like Donald Trump would be a lot longer than the two pages that we have. Well, surely a full Trump tax return would have shown up in a Pulitzer Prize winning journal's mailbox, right? I mean, the full, the full tax return, more than two pages? Then again, Maybe a real journal or anchor could do better than sputter and stutter around the fact that they found nil in a decent tax statement that they were hoping would show something to discredit said president. Maybe? Oh, well, I guess they will just uh, try the same bag again near three years later. Here we go, folks. Don't you just love how Miss Maddow looks as though that's the first time she's read through those returns? Her and everyone else in the MSN were so positive there was something to muddy Trump's rent. rent. They were banking on it. They were so confident they were going to open up those returns right there to show the world just what a conniving, scrooge, humbugging bastard he was and is pompous, if anything, a pompous asshole. I, I give him that. Anyway, hello, hello, welcome one and all, wherever you may be. It is I, Raynard C. Fox, and today, as you can no doubt tell, we are reviewing uh, a bit of a blast from the past with Trump's opposition and the same old bag of tricks that they have up their sleeve. The only bag of trips, tricks they have up their sleeve. Same bullshit, different day, as they say. Or I guess, same left, different day. And with that, I give the... From the Guardian, drum roll, please. Trump, New York prosecutors subpoena eight years of tax returns because one year just wasn't enough. We're gonna have to comb eight and maybe we'll get lucky. Let's roll them dice, let's roll them dice. Snake eyes, baby, come on, snake eyes, snake eyes. I, I don't play craps, that's a, that's a fool's game. Kind of like roulette, you know. I guess this, this is making a whole lot of sense with the left now. We see what games they're playing at the casinos. Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance sent a subpoena to accounting firm Mazars USA, which says it will fully comply. Well, as I've said before, it could end the article right here. It looks like there's going to be nil drama on the White House side, but let's read on anyways. And of course, Mazars USA says it will fully comply. Of course it will, because we saw from Ms. Maddow's incompetency several years prior, he had nothing to hide. Same shit from the left, different day. I will say it again. Donald Trump faces a new battle over the release of his tax returns after New York prosecutors issued a subpoena for them. 
what battle? His firm just said they would fully comply. See what I what I mean about any of the article right here, but then I could I wouldn't have a video for you guys to, you know, shit on. But anyways. Trump is the first US president in nearly forty years not to release his tax information despite having promised to do so during his two thousand sixteen election campaign. He has resisted pressure from Democrats and watchdogs demanding greater transparency. But on Monday, the office of the Manhattan District Attorney Cyrus Vance investigating hush money payments to the pornographic actor Stormy Daniels, way to bring up that dead horse guardian, and, and I'm in no way speaking ill or speaking of Miss uh, Daniels' body type. I'm, I'm not being a bigot here. Not being a bigot. Shh. Not being a bigot. Uh, anyways, to the pornographic actor Stormy Daniels during the 2016 presidential election, subpoenaed eight years of Trump's personal and corporate tax returns according to media reports. Mazars USA, which prepares Trump's tax returns, said in a statement that it would fully comply with its legal obligations. They wording their legal obligations. I like that. I like that. What can we get around with? Everything you can and please do just to give them a run for their money. Democrats welcome the move. The Senator Amy Klobuchar, uh, sorry, Klobuchar, Klobuchar of Minnesota, a candidate for president, tweeted in response, one way or another, we will get Donald Trump's tax returns. Bum, 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 bum. Sorry, that was Perry Mason there. I was trying to do the Perry Mason that last bit. Another 2020 candidate, Julian Castro, the former housing secretary under Barack Obama, wrote on Twitter, the president is not above the law. The American people deserve to know if he deceived them in hopes of winning an election. He must comply with this subpoena. I'm sorry I'm doing these voices. I have no idea who these people are or what they sound like. I'm, I'm just spitballing here. Um, and uh, in going back to that first uh, presidential candidate, in other words, that can be taken. The left will twist the president's arm and will do whatever it means or needs to to obtain those returns. Almost threatening sounding, isn't it? I mean... What's the, what's the point of being so demanding anyways? They did say they would fully comply with, fully comply with its legal obligations. Um, whatever those obligations are, we will see. Maybe this doesn't need eight years. Maybe their legal obligations is one year. Maybe uh, legal obligations after they have uh, appealed to the courts under this demand. But uh, again, uh, I, I just love that one way or another we will get Donald Trump's tax returns. I mean, it, it's almost mandated, like they're going to get them come hell or high water, uh, whatever they have to do to do so. Um, that can be taken as like, we'll do whatever we have to, legal or illegal. Sounds very much like our good old lovely DNC, just getting into those hijinks again, huh? A federal investigation into the hush money payments led to Michael Cohen, Trump's former lawyer and fixer pleading guilty to campaign finance violations, which along with tax fraud and making false statements to Congress resulted in three year prison sentence. The most, uh, the most effect any of this, uh, I don't know what you would call it, but this monger, I will just call it mongering. I don't know if I'd call it fear mongering, but this, the most effect that this has had so far is like the, the most that's happened is um, Michael Cohen, Trump's lawyer, so far is the only one that has resulted in any like in any damages done to Trump, not Trump himself, but to his lawyer who got a three year prison sentence um, over this. The investigation in effect wound up in July. Trump, who denies Daniel's claim of a sexual relationship, has claimed any payments were a personal matter, not a campaign expense. Uh, yeah, she was doing uh, she was doing campaign uh, campaign advisement. I'm sure you know how to win them ladies over those female those sexy single female voters on Pornhub and of course Miss Daniels also wound up getting number one in number one uh, porn actress on Pornhub like for several months on end after that whole can of worms opened up don't ask me how I know this by the way I'm more of a Mia Khalifa fan myself but last month Vance's office launched a fresh investigation into whether the Trump organization falsely listed its reimbursement for Co of Cohen for the $130,000 payment to Daniels as a legal expense. This would be illegal under New York law. Well, for his sake, I hope he didn't. Goodness knows, given how many times the left has done this over and over again, they just keep shooting themselves in the foot and then they get like a, a false limb put on and then they shoot that one or they put a stick of dynamite on it, uh, you know, like 
I swear to God, it's like watching Wiley E. Coyote go off the fucking cliff over and over again. I would not be surprised if there was no illegal actions done uh, from this at all, and they're just banking on it again. They're hoping this is the case. Um, one would h hope not. Cross your fingers. This is the last thing Trump needs to uh, lose an election, and I myself personally wouldn't, at this point, not want to see him lose this election. Uh, the DNC has already failed as far as I'm concerned. They they could not find anybody worth a shit. And I, I'm speaking of Bernie too. You know, he had his chance, he bent a knee to the DNC and has proven that he cannot stand up for himself or for the people of this country. So I'm hoping nothing illegal that would damage Trump's, Trump, Trump my buddy, I'm, let's, I'm hoping here, man. I'm gunning for you. Please don't, please don't fuck this this one up. You need to get this election, okay? Or we we're really screwed here. Anyways, Vance, who is a Democrat, sent a subpoena to the a Democrat. What do you know? Go figure. What I was I was saying, same left, same shit from the left, different day, same shitty left, different day. Anyhow, uh, Vance, who is a Democrat, sent a subpoena to the accounting firm Mazars USA, seeking his personal and business tax returns dating back to 2011. The New York Times first reported, followed by the Associated Press and other outlets. New York Times was first, we were first. I love it how they, they list who, I don't know if they have to list, but it just seems odd that they list who first, unless it's you know showing that we're exciting citations and stuff like that. But it's like the media, of course, is all in a surefire race. Who can put out the first hate Trump shit or fear mongering shit about Trump or Stormy Daniels or whatnot, like who can get there first? Who gets the blue ribbon this time? Uh, the Times noted that even if the Manhattan District Attorney's Office were successful in obtaining the president's tax returns, the documents would be covered by secrecy rules governing grand juries, meaning they would not become public unless they were used as evidence in a criminal case or unless, you know, another Miss Maddow comes along and says, ah, a First Amendment, this gives us the right to, to publish this information uh, like it or not, whether this is legal or not, whether this is actually pertaining to the First Amendment or not, I don't really care. I'm real. Pinch me. A lawyer for the Trump Organization, Mark Mikazi, told the AP he was evaluating the situation and will respond as appropriate. Trump's taxes are one of the biggest and longest running controversies of his political career, almost uh, as long as the birther conspiracy for Obama. Like, let's see if Trump can can win this one too. I I got a I got a long I had a longer conspiracy. It's terrible Trump impression. I I had a longer. Uh, had a longer uh, controversy and conspiracy than the birther conspiracy, which I started. I am, I am, I am the God Emperor. The Jews in Israel love me. They love, this is why I'm God Emperor to the Jews. I'm, uh, terrible Trump, uh, Trump impersonation. My apologies. Ter terrible Trump impersonation. House Democrats have also subpoenaed them and are currently locked in a legal fight with Mazars USA that could extend into the 2020 presidential election. Steve Rosenthal, a tax lawyer with the Urban Brookings Tax Policy Center in Washington, told Reuters this year, I expect Trump will stall at every opportunity. Delay is a victory for Trump. Yes, it is, and a loss for you, which is more what you're worried about right now, isn't it, guys? Isn't it Rosenthal? Isn't it left? Isn't it Bernie? Isn't it everybody who's gunning against him? And uh, delay, nothing. Time is a victory for Trump, which you guys are almost already out of. You're in the primary, getting close to this, close to the primaries, and you're scraping at the bottom of the barrel for candidates just like they were back when it was, uh, oh God, who was that president, who was that uh, potential running against uh, uh, Obama the second time around? That was the year that the Republicans were just scraping the bottom of the barrel for the craziest of the crazies. That's, that's you guys this year left, that's you guys, and so yes, Delay is a victory for Trump, but he's honestly delayed enough. He could probably he could probably win right now. He probably is going to win as of right now, given all the shit you guys have put on yourselves, like all the all the bullshit that you've tried to pull on him that's backfired in your faces. That is the reality of this right now. So that's all I've got for this vid, folks. Did you like it? Did you hate it? Please let me know what you think. Like, comment, and or subscribe down below. Thank you very much for joining me. This has been Reynard C. Fox. And remember, non quam desistit, the non quam continuo unum duas ve uncias. Never give an inch and never give up. Goodbye and have a good night.